Yeah, <clears throat> I'm just going to see that a couple of people have joined the Slack new as well. So if anybody has questions, you can, uh, we do have a few minutes for that. But I feel like, um, I think it's okay for us to sort of go into what we had planned to be a bit of a, a, a wrap up and summary. Um, and if you've been here all day, then, um, you know, I think it's still helpful reflection. But if you haven't, this is something that I created for our event last year, where um, if you miss the whole day, you know, there's still a great 15 minutes for you to kind of get some of the highlights. And so um, if you have your slide deck, I had tagged on a few slides at the end ah. where I was sort of taking notes uh, while listening to all the fantastic speakers today and sort of yeah. reflecting on these sort of great messages that um, were coming across from them. So <clears throat> one of them we wanted to start with just um, we should say, like, what is GitOps today in the sense that um, if anybody joined us last year, um, I was so appreciative of Cornelia's various talks on, you know, we wanted to make sure there's always going to be new people and kind of want to understand what the definition is. And also, you know, especially last year's theme was about um, people wanting to um, educate within their companies and, you know, helping them to sort of define what it is and how they can explain it. Um, but now fast forward a year, um, these principles are kind of, and definitions are getting solidified within the CNCF in the GitOps working group. Um, Cornelia, you had mentioned these discussions with the DevOps forum. So um, I was thinking, I, I, I even know as we were evolving, like we kept having these slides like four principles, four principles. And then like this fifth one was <laughs> showing up a lot. So we were like, okay, wait, some people were saying, well, the fifth one's kind of a tag on to the fourth one. So I thought it'd be great for anybody who, you know, wasn't able to join for a lot of the days, you know, this is all recorded so you can join us, but like kind of reflecting like what, what are sort of the things that you feel pretty secure about that um, have remained unchanged or maybe have developed for the better in terms of like, how would one define GitOps as an elevator pitch and, and perhaps, yeah, some of the now new print, uh, principles a little bit more evolved. Yeah, so there's a couple of elements. I mean, one of the first things I kicked off the day today to point out that we aren't just putting lipstick on a pig here, like we did in service-oriented architectures, didn't really fundamentally change anything under the covers, and therefore we didn't get a lot of benefit from it. And so what GitOps represents, and, and, and we'll have a little bit of a discussion on this tomorrow morning as well, is it represents this recognition that we have to do things differently. And that's why we have this continual emphasis on the software agents, the controllers, the reconciliation. And so, I mean, GitOps in a nutshell says you are, it's, if you will, it's a little bit of infrastructure as code, but done in a particular way where we're doing things through reconciliation. Um, and we are, uh, you know, leveraging some of the, the elements of, of Git. Now, I, I, the other comment that I want to make, if, if you'll permit me, um, Tomo, is that I didn't go over it. I showed the slide, but I didn't go over it in detail. Last year, we talked about these four principles, which were going from the bookends, declarative configuration, and uh, software agents that are running in the runtime environment. So that's the deployment and the deployment controller. And then we added Git and we added Flux. So those were kind of the, the four. We added that continuous delivery um, based on a, a reconciler. What the GitOps working group did when they created the principles was they recognized that controllers for delivery and controllers for runtime operations are really one in the same thing. It's this, the principle that's applied is this one of reconciliation. So principle number one is declarative configuration. Principle number two is versioned immutable store. That's the Git part. Principle number three collapsed what we had as two separate ones that said constant reconciliation. But then they added a fourth. And the fourth one is really important. It says, you will use this process to do your operations, full stop. It says, you will use declarative configuration and Git operations as your operational interface. There is no other operational interface. And so that's really how kind of those principles have matured over the course of the last year. They didn't, they didn't take a hard right, but they matured and got a lot more, um, a lot more solid, if you will. 
Yeah, I feel like that's a reminder to people who may be coming in new or joining that um, <clears throat> all of these um, new resources are with the GitOps Working Group page, right? Um, yep. With the CNCF. So, which you yeah. can find on GitHub. Yes, and I can't remember where we are now, but I think in the beginning there were some 60 companies represented. I don't know, I don't want to <laughs> exaggerate, but it's just, it was really exciting to see the enthusiasm and people getting involved. Um, and if anybody um, heard of or was able to go to GitOpsCon, that was really the first event run by this working group. So it's really sort of solidifying through the CNCF, through KubeCon, through these events that um, this is definitely something that um, many companies are coming to, I mean, make the conversation active, but also coming to have these agreements on this is what we're, we're seeing as GitOps and yep. the benefits that we see. Yep, absolutely. So with that, maybe we can uh, shift a little bit to the summary and go to the next slide where I know it's a bit busy, but it was sort of my notes page because I was just sort of, you know, I had sort of the vision of um, how we wanted to kick off the day with, you know, the, the new um, perspectives, the new developments. And then we we're so excited that we had both Microsoft and AWS, like really excited to give their keynotes, to sort of show how much GitOps is, is core to their business, to what they're offering to their customers, to what customers are asking from them, as well as hearing these fantastic stories from companies and um, stories through like talks about the maturity model of the actual benefits that people are getting. So yeah, um, so yeah I, I took some of these notes, but um, yeah, I thought um, we, we've, we've already talked about, you know, not only do we have organizations, foundations, but events now all around GitOps. That's very exciting. Um, I didn't want to cut you off. Did you have something you're... Yeah, no, I was just going to chime in. You mentioned the maturity model, and I want to draw everyone's attention to Dora was referenced there. Um, we, uh, in the past, we've talked quite a bit more in, in detail around the metrics that Dora provides, but what the GitOps maturity model did was it continued to hammer home that we're not doing GitOps because it's the coolest, you know, the, the buzzword bingo, center of the buzzword bingo card, and because I, I want to just fill out my resume. It's because it generates real business value. It allows development teams to um, deploy more frequently and, um, and shorten their lead time to getting things out into production. And it allows the platform teams to provide str stronger levels of resilience, security, and all of those types of things. And so those are there's some real science behind that that allows us to show the tangible business benefits of, thing, of these GitOps practices. Yeah, uh, I particularly noted, um, you know, it, it recalled Dora for me, your, your mentioning of Dora last year when Tiffany was really going through just, you know, concrete numbers of how many more hours to spend or whatever percentage more spent on development versus, you know, keeping things afloat and, and yeah. making sure things weren't breaking. And, um, you know, that's, that's real metrics for velocity and for innovation. So that's very, very exciting. It's, it just feels... It's been, you know, basically 12 months. <laughs> it's just like, we have so many more data points. We have so many more, you know, really large companies, really, you know, significant companies. Um, and I think it's important that we have telcos, we have financials, we have all kinds of interesting verticals being represented. So um, yeah. it's been such a great kickoff to day one and I've been very excited about it. And I also wanna, um, and I should give a shout out. So. Where in 10 minutes, we'll be going into the after hours where we've got some great talks coming up. And what reminded me was, you know, we have solutions that are not just their products, they're open source, there's tools in the CNCF. So some of that, you'll get a taste of some cool stuff that um, we'll have talks in the, the after hours right now. But tomorrow as well, right? We are so excited that we were able to um, open the call for papers and get such a high quality of number of papers and also you know as we've seen Nick, we, we're involved with GitOps Con and you know we um, are part of GitOps Summit and it's just amazing how you know I since I was um, part of the organizational group I, I was concerned that there might be some overlap and there's just there's just so much to talk about there's just so many different speakers from different companies and around the world that it was really quite a, um, for me you know solidifying that there's just there's a lot out here and um, you know, it's great to have all these different events because you know, we have so many different kinds of quality uh, speakers submitting and I'm, I'm really excited to hear their talks. Um, so yes, and of course our own, we got to plug a little bit there, right? Our Flux project in the CNCF, um, as I mentioned, we're in incubation and 
um, full steam ahead into going toward graduation. Um, we mentioned that Flagger, the, um, the progressive delivery uh, tool that we had has been um, in the last year become part of Flux. So it's um, still something that you can use with your various other tools, but we also wanted to make sure that um, for people who are using it with Flux that it's optimized for that. So that's part of it's being put within the uh, Flux family. And so I think all these different offerings also make GitOps really exciting. I'll pause in case you had something to say. Oh, no, no, actually, I was, I was just pausing because I really did want to emphasize the point, um, which I did mention when Nathan was talking from AWS, as GitOps at scale, right? That's also what's really exciting with all these different companies. We um, can't have something like GitOps as this fancy little cute boutique -y thing that's cool and you know cool people can talk about it but it's it's very real um it's exciting here in may from state farm saying you got to do it <laughs> like this yeah. is this, this has just become so essential and you know you have to rely on um potentially cloud solutions or other solutions of your own to make sure that GitOps works at scale um, and finally the bullet at the top right is yes it's as you've talked about now hopefully it's very clear you know it's it's for platform teams it's for app teams it's for um, across the board, there's so many ways that you can get up all the things. Yep. Um, so with that, uh, we have to re-emphasize our big announcement today. We're very excited to share Weave GitOps, which um, we really feel, um, you know, it's alpha, it's open source, it's free, um, but we really want people to try it because we really have designed it to be the easiest way to get started with GitOps. And we knew that we also wanted to be the most powerful. So of course we built it on Flux. Um, all the fans, all the people who've been using Flux, we continue to get so many more GitHub stars. So so many new users to Flux know that it is a really, really powerful tool. So for me in developer experience, of course, it was just like so exciting that um, we're finally building something that's on Flux, something that we truly believe in. And you know, we have such great people both within the company and within the maintainers group and within the extended community who have contributed so much and continue to do so to make Flux so powerful. So to have this Weave GitOps built on it is just really, really fantastic. And I feel that way we're really being able to reach out to very different types of use cases and different types of users. And it's really exciting. So uh, thanks to um, also our engineers for working on it and for Cornelia for demoing it live. <laughs> Um, yeah, and you know, the, I love how you how you put these these two things next to each other. And I talked earlier when I announced Weave GitOps that it's convention over configuration. It's not convention in lieu of configuration. It's convention over configuration. So your first bullet here is it's the easiest way to get started. That's the convention. But because it's built on Flux, because it's built on this hugely powerful um, toolkit that Flux represents. That's what allows us the easy way of doing the configuration when we need it. So it really is, Flux is the thing that powers that convention over configuration, both the ease and the, the power. So I love that. So definitely want everybody to get started. If um, you haven't taken a screen share, please uh, go to our product page to try out Weave GitOps. Um, and you'll see there that we, um, if you're already on our Slack channel for GitOps days, you'll notice that um, I created a Weave GitOps channel as well. So as I mentioned, this is alpha. So we um, have gotten the getting started steps there. And we wanna make sure that um, you are taken care of at any, any step of the way. If there's anything that's not smooth in the docs, like please, please chat with us in that Slack channel. Um, we'll all be there to help you along. Um, as we mentioned, there are the steps to getting started. And um, I set up a meetup for next Tuesday, Cornelian mentioned it. Um, and I think we have a couple more. We'll kind of like keep these rolling so that um, those, because it's fairly quick, it's very GitOpsy and very quick, we think that you can actually follow along. So if you wanna come and just watch, watch the steps, that's one thing. But if you wanna follow along, it's, it's very, very possible. And so that's how we'll be spending those hours. Um, it's an hour each time. And so next week we actually have Cornelia herself who will be leading that one. So you'll, you'll get the, the best of best and the rest of us will start to um, continue to do that and get people started and get your feedback. And if anybody has thoughts on where you want we get ups to go, then we're very excited to hear from you. Yep. 